Vega! Vega! Perfect. Yeah, we all know this Ash of War does a lot of damage, but you don't realize just how much it can do. Also, spoilers for the final boss if you still care about that sort of thing. Hello, my fellow Tarnished. Welcome to not just one of the most powerful builds of the DLC, but just full stop across all of Elden Ring. This is monstrously powerful, but you don't need me to tell you that. You probably know that, yeah, Carrion Sovereignty does a lot of damage. I'm not blowing any minds here. However... Two things. Number one, getting the actual most out of it is surprisingly tricky. And two, even though that yes, putting it on a great sword gives you a high amount of poise, it's still not that high. Which leads to the biggest problem with this Ash of War. You can't use it against any boss that matters because most of their attacks, or I don't know, all of them in the case of Radan will knock you out of the ash. You can either use stage one charge for little bits of damage. I say little, stage one is still like 6k, but good luck ever doing the full combo. Unless you have a solution. And that solution is what I am here to provide. And it's not just one solution, it's not just two, it's a triple whammy of options to play with this beautiful Ash of War. In both its power, but also in how it looks. I mean, come on! Summoning this massive magical blade that just makes you... And yes, as uh, you have seen, it will annihilate Radan, though admittedly it's still Radan, and I did have a little bit of a heart attack moment at the end there to get the final hit, but you know, it got the job done better than most. In any case, what are the three solutions? Well, option one is go so extreme into damage that you will kill the boss in like two hits, no matter what boss it is, so you don't need to worry about poise or trading or anything like that, you just hit it once in the first opening and you've won, congratulations. This is using stuff like the Madness Combo with the Black Dumpling and the Madding Hand and the New Talisman and uh, making one Excalibur level swing. The next option then is Endure. Yes, this gem of an Ash of War, normally best paired with uh, incantations and sorceries, but in terms of carrying sovereignty, it still has quite the solid place. For example, this Mesmer. Endure lets you hyper armor through his opening land explosions of both phases, which means you can endure quick swap to uh, your, well, lizard. And yes, the lizard is the objectively best great sword, and I love that because I love lizards. I have like seven of them. Hey, Saturn, uh, this branch, I, I don't think it's big enough for two lizards. Hey, what are you talking about, Mars? Of course it is. We can share it. Ah, have you ever seen Lion King? What? Long live the king. I regret nothing. And then just be charging to max while the boss is still completing its move that you're ignoring because you've got infinite hyper armor and massive damage reduction, and then you bring the uh, veritable hammer, or blade in this case, down and ruin it. Then you have the third option, which is the old classic Iron Jar trading battle, which is also incredibly fun, as the boss uselessly wails on you while you are this immovable object, and you are charging and charging and charging, and the rest is history. And we will go over all three in particular, though they don't really need that many changes to the build. The Madnessy hyper damage method needs the most, but we will get to it. Past that, though, yeah, the Lizard Greatsword. It's got the special heavy attack that fires out the tongue, and if you do that at melee range, then the Greatsword and the tongue both hit, which means it's a fantastic status builder. So we use this with Frost, so we can Frost up our enemies, make them take 20% more damage, and, well, that's already absurd, given how much damage we're doing to begin with. 
We just want a great sod for the bit of poise it does give, and the lizard is honestly the choice. It also looks really cool to have the lizard summoning the blade while you're holding it above your head. It works beautifully just progressing through levels because you do so much damage. You don't need to fully charge it. Just the tap down and tap sweep will one-shot most enemies you actually come across. So, this thing is lovely, and I've been wanting to do a proper build with it since essentially the start. And as I said, we've all known it's powerful, but to actually make it work against bosses, well, this is the way. So let's get into it. For just the standard Iron Jar and Endure version then, this is where we're at stats wise. Your 60 Vigor, 15 Mind is uh, plenty, you can get two full casts off, which is mostly all you need, and then enough Endurance to feel comfortable slash medium roll in the build. The minimum 12 and 14 for Strength and Dex to use the weapon one handed, pump that int all the way to 80, Faith at 25 for the buffs, and we don't care about Arcane. Equipment wise then, the weapon of course, the Great Lizard Greatsword, set to cold with Carrion Sovereignty, the Ash of War. Any given dagger you like, with Enjoron set to any given divinity you like, it's literally just an Enjor stick, so don't worry too much about what stick that is. A random zero weight seal, so we can just cast our buffs, and then any given random glintstone staff, so we can cast our Terra Magica. Don't use loose hats, because there's no reason for it to cost more FP than it needs to when it's just going to be buffing us. Armor-wise, then, the Spellblade set does buff it, as it is a magic skill, and you get 2% per piece. However, you also get 2% all damage from Rakshasa, and Rakshasa doesn't actually make you take more damage. If you didn't know, it just has less damage negation than similar weighted armor. So, it's actually just strictly better than the Spellblade stuff that has basically no damage negation anyway, and it will give you more poise. Technically, I'm only wearing one piece, because if I wear any more, then I won't be medium weight, but you could choose to put more in Endurance, and then go full Rakshasa, and you will do as much extra damage as Spellblade, but take less damage, somewhat ironically. But either way, all four slots should be either Spellblades or Rakshasa. Talismans wise then, we want Shard of Alexander, of course, we are buffing our Ash of War to the maximum here, and the same goes for Godfrey, it's chargeable, fully charged, another 15% damage, don't mind if I do. It's pure magic, so an extra 12% from the Magic Scorpion is delicious, and really don't worry about the extra damage taken. We currently take 63% reduced physical, if I take this off we go to 66. Like, it's costing us 3% damage taken to gain 12, yeah. And we do mitigate that all with the Dragon Crest, though if you want to actually use the vast reduction ridiculous amount of poise stagger damage this does, then you can do something like put on the Blade of Mercy to get that power boost for the next carrion. The issue is, the best thing to do with a stagger is get a free carrion grander in and not actually take the crit hit, so that's why it's not there, but just so you are aware. Then, we, in our Wondrous Physic, want the Stone Barb Crack Tier to make the stance breaking happen that much easier. This only lasts for 30 seconds, of course, so there is other options we'll go over, but it is very, very nice, and it means you just will stance break everything with the 1-2 combo. And then you want to have your supply of Iron Jar Automatics crafted and at the ready. For your spells, Golden Vow, for that lovely damage increase and damage reduction, I would heartily recommend Beast vitality as we can use it we might as well the little extra bit of health coming in especially if your iron jar tanking can make all the difference and then yes lovely terra magica for that 25 percent or so extra damage to the carrion grandeur past that feel free to put on anything else that does work for you technically the weapon does hit if you are in close range while using it so the uh, physical part of flame grant me will help the literal weapon part of the hit but it's not worth using your body buff slot for because, of course, Iron Jar. If you're not using Iron Jar, honestly, I would definitely recommend putting yourself a supply of Boiled Crab for that physical damage negation extra. 
extra, it does help out and it is free, we don't really have a super necessary body buff component with this build. And then if you don't want the stone barbed, which truthfully you don't need it, but it is a very helpful on certain bosses like Radan, you can instead put in your opaline to take even less damage or go all out just this once and put on your blood sucking crack tier for an extra 20% damage for a free 40% increase, which is kind of ridiculous, honestly. For the madness version, you want to put on the, the madding hand and make sure it is actually equipped in your right when madness is triggered. We want the black dumpling helmet and then finally the age one's exaltation coupled with howl of shabribri as you can see there my fourth spell and then simply you trigger madness by chain howling before you walk through the fog door as the last thing that you do and then head on through to the big hit. It's a big long buffing sequence as you're seeing but it does result in the absolutely stratosphere hits that this thing is uh, capable of. And to note, you obviously need to go to 33 Faith to cast Howl of Shiribi, and because the point here is just to do so much damage, defense doesn't matter, I took the points out of Vigor to keep Intelligence at 80 to make it happen, you can make your own call there. When it comes to how to pilot it, then it's very straightforward. Depending on the boss in question, you want to buff up with your Golden Veil, with your Bestial Vitality, and then drink your Wondrous Physic. Head into the boss room, plop down your Terra Magica, and then wait for your opening to do the fully charged carrying Granger with the fully charged follow-up. That will get the stance break, and then you do one more fully charged Granger, and then you've probably won at that point. Mixing in the Iron Jar and the Endure, then, it depends what you're up against. You always want to have all your buffs up, you always want to have Terra Magica on the ground, and then if it's something like Mesmer, who you can really take advantage of his opening orb with Endure, then go that route, or if it's something like, you know, one-on-one -on -one man fighting Radan exchanging blows, then you just need to make sure Iron Jar is always up, keep your health topped up, and then charge the Ash through uh, the hits that you're receiving, and you will come out on top with that damage trade, which feels very, very good. It's hard for me to just tell you, do this and you'll win with this, because you have to really get a feel for what works against any given thing, because you have all of these options to enable you to get the carrying Granger up, and it's about finding and figuring out the right one in the right order when with the given moveset you're up against that lets it happen. It's very satisfying and very worth it when you do and I implore that you give it a go. When it comes to how to get the new things, as I will of course assume you have the base game stuff or at least know about it, the Lizard Greatsword is from literally farming any of the imps using it in the three new catacombs. Pretty simple. Carrion Sovereignty. You want to go to the Church District High Road site of Grace. You want to uh, ride on around here to this part, then head down this slope along the cliffside, and then there will be a cave right here, and on the roof of the cave will be a beetle. You knock it down with any given ranged attack, finish it off, and it will drop the Ash of War. The Rakshasa Armor. I will be blown away if you don't already have it and know about it at this point. It's in every build because it's just so optimal in every free slot. But in any case, the Eastern Nameless Mausoleum right here. Follow along the cliffside from the Recluses River Upstream, Site of Grace. And there you have it, everybody. Optimum, correct, carrion grandeur that will let you actually use the thing and experience the fun and the damage instead of just getting knocked around and constantly poise broken. I do think it's somewhat missold around the place that, yeah, carrion grandeur, it's just really overpowered, does so much damage, use it and you win, when a lot of the time it actually takes quite a bit of planning and forethought to land the thing, and then, yes, it does monster monstrously gross, disgusting damage, but with how much effort you have to go to actually get that, honestly, I don't think it's too unwarranted, but I would love to know your thoughts on it. In any case, I hope this has helped, I hope you enjoy it, and until next time, like if you did enjoy it, subscribe for more, consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below so we can keep bringing you builds, and until we meet again, a good Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our ins Sanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye